Hi, this video is on thermometers and temperature scales. I'm following the order in Young and Friedman's University Physics, although again, any physics textbook is going to cover this at some point. Of course, um, we get the idea of temperature. Uh, I think it's about 80 degrees outside today. It's a very nice day. Why am I indoors doing physics videos? That's the question, isn't it? Um, but we, we understand temperature. Of course, in America, we use the Fahrenheit scale because, because we always have. Uh, it's very hard to wean us off of what we, you know, it's very hard to wean you off of what you've always done. Um, in the 1970s, Jimmy Carter tried to get Americas to go, to go on the, um, the metric system because it's the, uh, it's the system of science. So he thought it would help us to become more scientific in our thinking. We'd get more people going into those areas, maybe. Um, of course, the rest of the world, Europe and so forth, uses the metric system. It's a much more precise uh, system. But uh, again, Americans pride themselves on doing it their way, whether it makes any sense at all. I remember at the time I thought, yeah, down with the metric system. And now I think, man, we are so stupid. But anyway, enough of that. Let's move on. Celsius temperature scale. So the ten Celsius temperature scale is a, uh, it's a more precise scale. It was invented, you know, to do science. Uh, temperature scales are human creations. And the Celsius temperature scale, basically, the way it was set up is we said, let's set, say that the, the freezing point of water is zero and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees. And then let's just divide up from zero to 100 uh, into 100 little bits, um, and there we'll have the Celsius scale. And so in the Celsius scale, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Isn't that nice, nice, simple, ready to go? Um, so anything colder than zero degrees Celsius is negative. There is a bottom to this, um, as we'll talk about in the next video. Um, the, the absolute zero, the, the absolute coldest that anything can get, is negative 273.15 degrees uh, Celsius. That's when all the kinetic energy just goes out of everything and we die. You know, it's just completely um, no motion whatsoever. Um, I don't think we can actually get there. It's a projected uh, value. Uh, but anyway, that's the Celsius temperature scale. Of course, um, most of us are used to the Fahrenheit temperature scale. I am, you know, as much as I criticize our, our lack of desire to move into the 20th century, uh, let alone the 21st century, um, I'm used to the Fahrenheit scale. It's the one I know. Uh, when I go into Europe, I have to figure stuff out. Uh, but in this system, the freezing point of water is at 32 degrees. This is why you don't want it to be exactly 32 degrees when it's raining, because then you get freezing rain and it freezes on the electric lines and you have sometimes down power lines because the weight of the ice just you know, bre breaks stuff. Um, all kinds of damage can happen. And so you want it to either rain at 31 or at 33, but not right at uh, 32 because then you're going to get ice on everything. Um, the boiling point of water is at 212 degrees. Again, very arbitrary number from a standpoint of, of water. Um, but, you know, if that's what you know, that's what you know. But you can see that if, if, uh, if water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, then we can see that 1 degree Fahrenheit is 100 212ths of a degree Celsius, or 5 ninths. So one degree Fahrenheit is five-ninths of a Celsius degree, and one degree Celsius is nine-fifths, flip it, of a degree uh, Fahrenheit. Now we do have uh, uh, formulas to help us convert uh, from one to the other. And Young and Friedman suggest rather than memorize these formulas, you kind of learn the logic uh, to them. Um, so for example, we know that, a, that the number in Fahrenheit is going to be bigger than the number in Celsius, right? The boiling point's 212 as opposed to 100. And so we need to get that, if we want to go from a Celsius de degree to a Fahrenheit degree, we've got to get it bigger. And so we take that fraction from the previous page, 9 fifths, and we multiply it uh, by the Celsius degree to expand the number. And then why do we add 32? Uh, because the freezing point of water is at 32, whereas for Celsius it's at zero. So we get we take that expanded degree, and, uh, and then to get from 0 to 32, we add, add 32. And then we have a Fahrenheit um, temperature as opposed to a Celsius. So let's say that you're visiting Germany, 
um, and it tells you on the news that it's going to be 20 degrees Celsius tomorrow. And so 5 ninths times 20, the 5 and the 20 cancel out to a 4. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 plus 32 is 68. So that means it's going to be 68 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. That's okay for me because I live in Indiana. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's look at the opposite process. So to get from a Fahrenheit temperature to a Celsius temperature, first of all, remember, we've got to get, got to, get to zero. So we're going to, take, we're going to zero it by subtracting 32 before we even start to, to get the Fahrenheit number down to the, bo the freezing point-ish of water. And then, remember, a Celsius degree is a lower number uh, than a Fahrenheit degree, uh, so we're going to multiply it by 5 ninths. So let's take that 68 that we just came up with and put it back in the other way. 68 minus 32 uh, is going to be uh, 36, right? Um, 9 uh, and 36 cancel out to a 4. 4 times 5 is 20, so that's 20 degrees Celsius. Woohoo! It worked out. Okay, so some odds and ends uh, as we leave this short section. So in terms of the way we write stuff, 10 degrees Celsius is a temperature. Oh, it's 10 degrees Celsius out. Whereas 10 Celsius degrees is an interval, like the difference between 10 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius is 10 Celsius degrees. That's the nomenclature here. Uh, and then uh, this section also mentions some different types of thermometers, and with this we'll end this cheerful video. Um, so so some, one, one way of measuring temperature is a bimetallic strip. Bi means two, so you have two metallic strips, one on top of the other. Well, if they have a different kind of bending uh, in relation to temperature, then by if you have a dial connected to them, then by the amount of bending you can tell by the dial what the temperature is. Um, a resistance th thermometer is a very precise kind of thermometer because as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down in a very calculable way. And so by measuring the amount of current running through uh, a certain amount of resistance, you can know exactly uh, what the temperature is if you know, you know what, what the material is and so forth. Then finally, there's a temporal artery thermometer. This is like where the nurse runs the thermometer across your forehead. What this is measuring is the infrared radiation given off by the heat of the temporal artery. And so that's the, we don't have to put those thermometers under our tongues any longer uh, because that infrared um, temporal artery thermometer um, gives us a inst pretty much instantaneous sense of the, uh, the temperature. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, thermometers and temperature scales.